Um, I would love to build something like that. I think the 11th commandment is, thou shalt not covet another man's compost bin. Well, hey friends and neighbors, this is Chuck out at Sheraton Park Farms. Welcome back to the farm. So it's Wednesday. You're gonna see this video probably on Thursday, but on uh, today, uh, again, today's Wednesday. On Sunday, two days ago, um, we decided we needed to uh, process about 143 of our pastured broilers uh, from out on the pasture, some of our Freedom Ranger color yield. So we got them all loaded up, brought them down to the processing room. I didn't get any footage of this. I wish I would have. Now, but uh, we got about halfway through those birds and uh, our scalder quit. It just died. It stopped working. And uh, for any of you that have processed chickens in the past, you know if the scalder ain't working, ain't nothing working. She's coming to a coming to a screeching halt. So ended up doing about 70 of those birds, and uh, we put the other 70 or so back on back out on. Well, I think we done 73 actually, and then we put the other um, 70 back out on pasture, and we done them today. So I took off work to get them finished up and get them knocked out. So going to roll a little bit of footage on processing our birds, um, talk a little bit about our compost pile and what we do with some of the waste product that, well, it ends up not being waste for us, but what we do with some of the leftover stuff from the chickens, the feathers, the blood, uh, the entrails, um, and uh, all the extra parts and stuff uh, from the process. I'm gonna show you what we do with that, and then uh, we're gonna come back and gonna talk about who won our drawing. Uh, we did, done our drawing for our $50 Amazon card, so hang around to the end of that. I'm going to show you the building. Um, a couple of videos ago, I guess it was the last video, uh, we showed we were taking down an old building here on the property. So I'm going to show you what happened with that. And uh, we also got a real nice surprise from the guys that clear uh, power lines uh, here on the property. Um, so we'll show you a couple of things that they done for us uh, when they came out to clear around the power lines. So a uh, lot going on today. Stick around and uh, see what all we got happening here. Hang out. most powerful and useful things that we've learned to do or been able to do here on the farm is somewhat large scale composting and this is our compost pile um, it's one that's been working for a couple of years now and really we don't turn it like I guess like we should um, but we do keep adding to and so we keep adding a lot of stuff to it and it continues to break down which works out really really well and as you can see right here on the front side got a lot of new chips and that's from our first round of processing a couple days ago um, we went in 
dug a trench in there and we were able to dump the blood and the offal and all that kind of thing, feathers, down in that little trench, covered it back up, and then we added some fresh wood chips to the top. So no, there's zero smell out here. You, I mean, there's, there's no smell whatsoever um, from any kind of chicken parts or, or leftover chicken guts. No smell at all. So what we're doing right now is I'm making a little trench here for the next round. And we're going to bring it up here and put it in this uh, in this spot here for uh, the birds that we've done today. So that's where they're going to go. Now, the trick to being able to do this is, and Joel South talks this about talks about this a lot, is you got to have have enough carbon. You got to have enough wood chips. And this right here is from a. Uh, uh, company that goes along and clears um electric electric lines overhead and cuts trees and that kind of thing we had some trees trimmed up here at the house where they came in and cleared out we'll show that here in a few minutes on the video but we told them we said you know while you guys are here do you want to dump your chips and they said oh absolutely beats hauling them halfway across town uh 20 minutes 20 or 30 minutes away to a dump site so we were able to capture quite a bit of carbon so this is some of what they brought. Let's walk down here and I'll show you the rest of what they uh, left behind. And after they got done cutting, they actually brought another load back today. So we've got two loads and I think Saunders said they're gonna bring maybe two more. So we've got a nice big pile of wood chips and mulch and that kind of thing. So got our trench started. Let's go down, we're gonna pour uh, the stuff from the buckets over into the bucket on the tractor and we'll bring it up here and we'll put it in the uh, put it in the compost pile so uh, let's run back down to the chicken processing room and get all that stuff and bring it up here and dump it and then we'll put some more wood chips on top and cover it up and enough carbon to keep the smell away
So that's what we do with our leftover chicken parts. Again, there's feathers, all the offal, all the uh, guts from the evisceration. Uh, there's some backbones in there. We didn't keep them out this time because we've got a ton of those in the freezer. Uh, feet, heads, um, blood. I mean, just all the, all the stuff you got left over from chicken processing. So there it is, and we'll just kind of let it stew for a while and uh, need to build a better compost bin. Um, Country View Acres, I think is the name of the channel. Uh, I think his name is Evan. Um, built a really nice compost bin using some old telephone poles and some two by tens. Uh, and I'll post a link to his video in the description down below. Um, I would love to build something like that. I think the 11th commandment is thou shalt not covet another man's compost bin. Um, but I really like his. I mean, he done it right. So I'll try to, I'll try to find that and post a link to that, uh, that video down below. So there's a compost bin. Crank it right along. Let's go down and see how the, uh, how the chicken processing is going. <clears throat> all right. So that's, uh, that's kind of how things went with the chicken processing and what we do with all the extra parts and pieces that's left over from whenever we end up processing the birds. Um, again, they, they, some of these chickens were really nice. Um, I had bought, um, I think about 30 or so. I don't remember. Anyway, fellow that lives kind of close to here called me up. He had bought some Cornish Cross, um, had some family issues that was going to kind of make it tough for him to take care of those birds. So he asked me if I'd be interested in buying them. So I bought them um, and put them out with our color yield. And typically we don't, you know, typically we don't like Cornish Cross, just our personal experience. I'm not beating up on Cornish Cross. I know some folks raise them and have really good luck with them. We've done a couple of batches of Cornish and just not had good luck. And so we, we elect not to raise those. But anyway, this guy was in a tough spot and needed a little help. So we, uh, we took those birds, put them out with our, uh, with our color yield and man, some of them were big. I mean, they were turkey size. They were, there were some big chickens in that crowd. So um, they were processed too, uh, but all these birds turned out really nice. We're very pleased with the way the birds looked and uh, <clears throat> the way they packaged up and what the, uh, what the yield ended up being. I think Snyder told me our, our feed conversion was about 2.6. So for every 2.6 pounds of feed, uh, we had a pound of sellable product. So we were pretty happy with that. Um, but that's kind of the deal on those. Now, if you remember in the last video, um, we talked about the building um, that we were taking down, the old granary, and how that thing was basically being held together by the termites holding hands. And so we got that thing pushed over with the tractor. And Ashton, who works for us part-time, uh, came over, and here's what's left of the building. It is gone. He tore that thing apart like a mad banshee. Uh, pulled the roof off, uh, pulled all the boards off, um, stacked the boards up, the ones that we thought were salvageable. We kept those. Um, we'll walk down and take a look at the lumber pile here in a minute. Um, we did keep some tin. Uh, I think that's gonna end up going in the trash. I've looked at it, it's pretty, some of it's pretty brittle. It's just not, it's just not in very good shape. Um, the building, the, the sheeting under the roof had quite a bit of tar paper on it. We we're gonna to try to keep some of those sheeting boards. And there was a lot of tar paper, a lot of nails in it, and it just ended up, it was gonna be worth a, it was gonna take a whole lot more time to uh, take that tar paper off and pull those nails out <clears throat> than what that lumber was gonna end up being worth. But we did get, um, we did get a nice stack of lumber here. I mean, I'm gonna spin the camera around. Hang on just a second here, let's spin the camera. So this is the lumber that we ended up getting out of the out of the building. Um, that that was good. We've gone through and looked at it. Um, pretty termite free. We're going to treat this. We'll spray it down um, with a little bit of bug killer and make sure that it's uh, it's ready to be reused. But we got a good stack of stuff here. <clears throat> Some of this is uh, thick, good quality. Uh, it's dry, straight. So we're going to try to reuse some of this uh, on our next project uh, coming up so got some good got some good lumber there again here's another shot this was the this was the building if y'all remember we came in so we got a little plywood here we got to pick up no big deal we came in under the shed here with the tractor and pushed that building down and you can see she is 
whistle clean now. She's gone. So glad to, glad to have that out of the way. Another nice surprise that we got, um, there's a company here, I don't know if they're national or, or where all they're at, there's a company here, I think, I think it's pronounced Asplund, and they do clearing uh, along power lines for uh, utility companies. And right here along our property, on, on the edge near the property line, there's, I don't know if you can see it very well in the, in the video right there, but there's power lines they're running right through here. So those guys came in, got this pin oak tree, it's over on the neighbor's property. They trimmed it up. There was a pine tree right there on the other side of my truck. They trimmed it up. And those guys, while they were here, cut down essentially three trees for me. Um, this was a maple, they cut it down. Got a little firewood out of that. We'll pick that up, stack it up, save it for, uh, we'll let it dry and save it for the fire pit. And they cut another one down over here. And so we got some more firewood here. So trimmed this beech tree. They done a number on the beech tree. They give it a real haircut. I trimmed that beech tree. I think this is called a Catawba tree. Some of you know what this is. Leave me a comment down below. Be a good look at the leaf here. Big old leaf. I think it's called a Catawba tree. Somebody told me one time. <clears throat> you could look at the bark. There's bark on it, so. And then this is a beech tree. And they, they trimmed the daylight out of it. There's that power line right there, so. Anyway, opened this whole area up over here on this side of where the building was, which is beneficial for what we were gonna do. Um, Beneficial for what we're going to do on the next on the next project here. So glad to have that done. So Sandra just got back from the store. I want to show y'all something real quick. Hey, come here a minute. Let me show you something. I want to show them something. Turn around here. Let me see your shirt. Model for us, like Van White there. <laughs> so we had a couple of shirts made. Um, we're kind of testing these out. We're using Teespring. I'll post a link in the description down below. Um, if you're interested, we're going to do, you know, just put some t-shirts out there. We had a couple of folks ask about t-shirts. I've done some, designed some hoodies and some tote bags and that kind of thing, but I'll put a link in the description. Thank you. T-shirt. T-shirt. I'll put a link in the description down below if you're interested in a t-shirt. So, but anyway, there's the building and the chicken's done today. It's been a big day. Hot, sweaty, summertime in North Carolina. So, all right, let's, uh. Let's talk about who won the drawing from our loading chute video. So a couple weeks ago, we were fortunate enough to hit the 1,000 subscriber mark uh, on YouTube. Um, and like I mentioned early, or like I mentioned in the loading chute video, um, and I'll post a link to it up above right now if you've not seen it. Um, like I mentioned in the loading chute video, I never imagined when I started kind of getting serious about this YouTube thing first of this year that I would get a thousand subscribers. My goal was by the end of the year, ended up hitting that in late July. So I was super pleased um, with how that worked and can't thank all y'all enough uh, for your support, the comments, subscribing, watching the videos. It really means a lot. And we've been so fortunate um, to have a lot of folks reach out to us and ask us questions about how we're doing things and try to um, you know, encourage folks that are interested in doing this farming thing and raising your own food um, really means a lot to be able to do that. Um, you know, we had some encouragement when we were starting out, so we feel uh, we feel obligated and we feel led to uh, you know kind of kind of pass it on. And so again, we appreciate everybody subscribing, everybody commenting, and, and all that kind of thing. But we've done a drawing uh, for the thousand subscriber mark, and uh, I'm gonna do my paper. Here it is. And I've sent this guy a message through YouTube and have not heard back from him. So Hal and Harry. On the Prairie, love the name, Hal and Harry on the Prairie. And looks like Hal and Harry has got a YouTube channel. He's got a few subscribers. Uh, so go over and check out Harry and see what he's got going on. But Harry, if you will send me an email, uh, and I'm gonna show my email on the screen right now, right here. Uh, Harry, if you'll send me an email uh, with your contact information, we will get your $50 Amazon card 
uh, to you uh, ASAP. But uh, Harry, we appreciate you watching, appreciate your comment. Also, real quick, for everybody else that commented uh, on that video, thank you so much for going out and supporting those local farmers. Had a bunch of folks talk about they'd gone to the local farmer's market, they'd gone to the local feed mill, uh, whatever the case may be, but they were supporting local and they were trying to you know, keep their dollars local and support those farmers that are trying to, trying to feed America and uh, keep, uh, keep the wheels on this thing. So appreciate y'all doing that. Um, I'm gonna post a link to a couple of videos, other stuff that we got going on over here. Uh, click on those, follow along. We got a lot of stuff going on here. I've had a little bit of a mental block the past couple of days on doing a video. So uh, glad to get this one out and glad to get it done. But uh, appreciate y'all watching and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.